we are very 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 high passing rate i you know this time also we have crossed the you know the global benchmark of acc passing rate what the examiner expects and then how do you uh, prepare and to give it back to the examiner it's more to do with that right you have to follow the methodology that is being discussed questions first thing question practice by your own hand second thing revision boot camp third thing seeing revision boot camp at least two times must okay then comes questions the past exam questions of the revision boot camp many of them have already been sorted out for you practice those questions by your own hand give me a mock exam take an input on that work on it pray to god touch your parents feet will crack it i don't think you know uh, ac says is that hard enough for us to really stop us hi how are you doing i'm good thank you how about yourself i'm good i'm starting to get serious about the subject uh ramadan went crazy because i was doing overtime in ramadan and then you know we're fasting around the clock so yeah hi nanta hello sir how are you doing i'm good thank you how about yourself good sir i'm doing well <laughs> we'll wait for a few more uh, minutes and then we'll kick start asma this is your first attempt right of sbl you have not given sbl earlier yeah this is my first attempt for all the professional papers so i'm taking a uh, sbr i'm sorry i didn't know that you're teaching sbr as well so i was taking it with mr tom clendon man okay. he killed my wallet like <laughs> this guy is expensive as heck <laughs> So yeah, uh was thinking if I knew before I'd actually take it with you but but he seems to be doing pretty nice yeah. You cleared SBR this time? I don't know. Uh I was supposed to be giving it. So okay. I bought the course but then I realized I should do SBL first. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. And Nandita how about yourself? Have you given SBL earlier? Uh no sir, it's the first time. All right. So do we get a lot of like uh Fail, failures in the subject like the pass rate is quite low we are fortunate uh, asma that we are very good on that we are oh. very 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 high passing rate i you know this time also we have crossed the you know the global benchmark of acc passing rate so we are oh. pretty above, pretty above that thank you know thanks to thanks to god for that uh, but i do get inquiries from various students around the globe uh who have given like sbl like five times six times seven times 10 times i have i've seen a student given 10 times and not able to clear it and they chat you know uh, unofficially with me on 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 whatsapp and so on and so forth so what we generally do is that after the um, uh, the exam result we try holding out a session for them okay. you know to really come up and open up their heart if there is anything i can help you help them out on but at the same time i invite my students also on to it just to make sure that you know they are getting the uh, the crux of the discussions that we are really doing with the students but as far as our result is concerned uh, asma i'm sure you know you will be treating me with a cup of coffee next time i'm telling you i'm supposed to get a promotion actually my boss has uh, promised me a promotion he said do this paper do the next two papers it's your whatever i asked for in the interview this time i'm going to give it that so like yay <laughs> <laughs> we will we will crack it the only thing that you need to follow asma is and i keep saying that like a broken record i'm sure you would have seen it in the sessions also you have to follow the methodology that is being discussed uh, sessions first thing question practice by your own hand second thing revision boot camp third thing seeing revision boot camp at least two times must oh, okay twice then comes questions the past exam questions of the revision boot camp many of them have already been sorted out for you practice those questions by your own hand give me a mock exam take an input on that work on it pray to god touch your parents feet you'll crack it hopefully so it's a you know it's a mantra that we all have to follow if we can i don't think you know uh, ac says is that hard enough for us to really stop us Oh, hopefully, so hopefully. Uh I I feel like so far it's been like more of a common sense thing to be honest. Like yes. I tried to attempt the question without actually um you know reading your answer first. And I was like, wait a minute, it sounds pretty different. But actually when I read about it, I'm like, you're pretty much saying the same thing as I'm saying, you know, in different words, yeah. Yes. Yeah. See the uh, and, and I'm sure you know you would have 
you would have heard me saying this again and again in the sessions that this is the most common sensical exam i have ever seen uh, in all throughout my life okay. sbl the only okay. challenge is that one has to really understand in terms of what the examiner expects and then how do you uh, prepare and to give it back to the examiner it's more to do with that it, content is not difficult you i'm sure you know you would have gone through yeah, like a, a lot, lot of answer. content and the question itself like if you just read the question you're like wait a minute they're actually giving you the answer it sort of yes but uh -huh. i would say the the bigger chunk that you really need to understand is that examiner expects an answer in a particular way for example he wants you to follow a format I for see. example he wants you to ensure that you're not uh, you're addressing the right question what is being asked you're not going hey why you're really point to point I then see. you know you're not padding your answer with unnecessary information he doesn't need load of information yeah. you know then you're understanding the situation that is being given to you in the question you may be a corporate manager you may be a cfo you may be maybe a ceo you may be a director you may be a consultant so you have to get into the role of that consultant and then answer it i see i cannot be a ceo when i when the role that is being given to me is of a consultant i cannot right i cannot behave like that but when i'm a ceo my tone would be very much different then i would not be a, you know a, you know a consultant then i would my you know i'll be more of authoritative more of professional more of so you really have to take that job take that role and then answer it and that's what you would learn you know asma when you would do the revision boot camp with me you know i'm sure that is there with you when you'll do go through that we have practiced that a lot by ourselves in yeah. between in you know with various questions just to make sure that we are really not uh, missing on to it nice revision boot camp is is must you have to do at least two times uh, that's like an icing on the cake once you have done the syllabus area content and then you do the revision boot camp it's like you know its foundation is is built by yeah. the sessions and then icing on the cake or the cherry on the cake is the revision boot camp once you have done that twice you're there to hit the exam i see all right good so aditya ishika prashant chahat you know i would really appreciate if you guys can please switch on your cameras all right nandita any questions any concerns that you may have before i really you know just went in and you know i just start exhaling myself in terms of you know what i have in my mind and of course you know of course you know taking out from there I think whatever you have uh, pretty much scheduled. I think all those doubts is what I have in my mind because I have gone through your previous webinars and uh, whatever I have jotted down is exactly what you have conveyed. So I'm pretty much sure that uh, you will completely, um, you know, kind of clear our doubts on that aspect. So I'm, I'm no, I don't have any prior questions. Sure. No, I just wanted to ensure that I'm not missing on anything if I really have to pick it up. All right, good. Thank you, Aditya. Anything that you have, Ishika, Prashant, I'm still waiting for your cameras to be on, please. Afia, Chahat, everyone, please. Aditya, anything that you have, buddy? You know this. This meeting is primarily to ensure that we are talking to each other, exhaling out you know the issues that we are observing in the exam, so that I can really help you in terms of anything that you that may not have worked your way, and I can tell you that you know okay, if you are thinking about an SBL exam in this way. then maybe this is the thing that you really need to change and you know this may might work for you so that is the intention of this discussion it's not about uh, me giving any session you know sessions are already you know with with all of the fintramers they already have it they're already going through it and of course we keep having these uh, these uh, weekend sessions you know in terms of uh, taking you through concerns queries and of course you know doubts that anyone may have people have my whatsapp number also asma reaches out to me you know quite often now and of course you know we talk we you know we chat you know if there is anything that we really need to sort out and so on and so forth all right aditya anything that you have buddy no sir have you given your sbl exam aditya earlier no, i haven't appeared direct i am ca final student uh, recently i have cleared a diploma in ifrs ccca Oh, very good. And uh, uh, on the basis of my CA final uh, papers, I got exemption in SCA instead of FR and SFM paper. So now I am a skill level student. My pending papers are uh, PM and all papers, uh, all papers of professional level. All right, all right, good. So you are contemplating as to how one should be starting off SBL, right? Yes, I you just saw your YouTube video. and right. i thought let's just join your webinar 
Good, cool, very good. Thank you. And uh, have you already registered with ACCA? As in, not yet, sir. Not yet. Okay. I'm trying to register in next week. Okay. So I will be connecting to Fintram Global Team. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, I would be providing the numbers towards the end. You can reach out to them, and I'm, I'm sure you know, they would be able to help you out on that. Thank you, sir. All right. Good. Afia, Ishika, Chahad, are you still angry with me? Uh, hi, sir. How about you, Afia? Have you given the SBI exam I earlier? I just enrolled a few days back. I cleared my SBR. I just enrolled a few days back. I have to go through all the classes and everything. So you have, so enrolled. So you have already taken the session? No, I haven't. Okay. I just enrolled now. All right. Okay, good. So any concerns, any any doubts that you want me to really cater to? Uh, so I'll get back to you regarding that. I all still right. have to. Thank Fair you. enough. So I tell you, you know, um, I, I the reason, of course, I wanted to be here was to really tell you that there are some most common mistakes that I've observed in the SBL exam due to which candidates have not been able to clear. And of, I'm, I'm sure, you know, uh, when you will see my sessions, we have really catered all of those issues and mistakes. And of course, with the help of various practical examples, uh, like what Asma was saying, you know, an example, which is a very practical one in Australia that we have picked up and so on and so forth. So the essence is that I just wanted to reiterate that there are some common mistakes that examiner is observing, which we should be aware of so that we are not repeating that mistake and of course, getting into that trap. So this meeting was primarily in relation to that so that I can give you my two cents on it. And of course, you know, the content and the sessions and the queries and the difficulties, you know, will certainly come our way and we'll handle it as we go, you know, go on to it. First thing first, the SBL exam as of now is a four hour exam, wherein one hour is something that we really need to spend on in terms of uh, reading the exam or planning for the exam. And three hour we will take in terms of writing the exam. I'm saying generally we have to take like one hour or so. 45 minutes to 60 minutes of the time is something that I want my guys to really spend on reading and, and preparing. Not even 61 minute. 60 minute. We are shutting off and then we are writing. Because if you are taking more time, then we'll not be able to write it in three hours. We'll just not be able to write it. So that's the cutoff that we really need to have. That's the first thing first. Another thing that we really need to know is that how are we going forward uh, with reading the exam? As in when the exam really comes our way, how are we reading, reading it? How are we preparing to write it? And then, you know, the other things that we really need to follow, whether it is professional skills, whether it is formats and so on and so forth. All of that is the plethora that we have to go through when we're really preparing for the SBL exam. Three common mistakes that I have observed in the exam. And of course, I'll take you to the through the latest examiner report in a while. But three common mistakes that I have observed in the SBL exam is the one the fourth, the, I would say the first and the foremost thing is people really struggling to read and prepare for the exam um, to be written in three hours. So generally take, you know, one and a half hour or so in terms of really understanding the whole content that is being given. Because over here, the exam is like, you know, uh, 13, 14 pages kind of a thing. You would get uh, a case study and then you would get exhibits on it. And then you would get various uh, questions based on those exhibits, which you need to correlate and correlate and so on and so forth. So the biggest challenge for anyone is to really absorb that content and the information. And of course, be ready to really understand those questions and relate it to the specific exhibit and then start answering that. That's the biggest challenge that many of the students have. And that's what we have really catered to when we have really done the sessions and of course, the revision bootcamp. The second piece that really comes up is the writing skills, which is like, you know, how do I structure my answer? What is to be given first? What is not to be forgotten? What is not to be added? How I really need to follow a particular format? Because there are various format in this exam. Examiner may give you, let's say, a press release or a report or a memo or a minutes of the meetings or a uh, sort of proposal or evaluation uh, track. So you would get various things being, being, being given to you in the form of various exhibits. Now, if you have those kind of things, on the same lines, you really need to give back the examiner all of those formats back. So examiner may ask you to prepare a memo. 
or he may ask you to prepare a press release or write a report or write a letter or write an email or give him a, let's say a briefing note and so on and so forth. Now, you really need to understand that, you know, what really goes in in terms of, you know, how those formats are being structured, what is to be included, what is to be ensured, because every, every format has a way of writing it as in, you know, there is a way to write that. So you really need to ensure that you're not missing on uh, that particular format and you're writing the way the examiner is expecting. And that's what many of the students really miss on. And the third, which I think is, again, something which, which many of the students struggle with is managing the time, managing the overall time in terms of giving due justice to each and every question so that towards the end, they're not left one or two questions unanswered over there. And then, you know, there are various uh, things that are being attached to reading. And then there are various things that are being attached to writing, format, professional skills, and so on and so forth. But essence of the, uh, the problem statement that we have in the SPL exam is that these are the three broad pillars uh, in which the problem really lies. And that's what I really want to, you know, start off as a, uh, you know, as a, as an underlying statement with all of us that we have to be very careful with all of these things. And we have prepared you a lot in our sessions on this. And of course, in the revision bootcamp, wherein we have practiced the concept questions, the comprehensive, the, the, the exam standard questions, the past exam questions, giving you an insights in terms of, you know, how one should be really addressing that, how one should be really, you know, getting away with it in terms of, you know, uh, facing that and of course resolving that in one go. That's what we have learned and that's what we'll be doing. All you really need to know is that you have to have to follow the process. As I was saying to Asma, you have to follow the process that is being discussed. It is a very tried and tested format for various SBL students around the world. And that has really made me accrue my coffee onto my financial statements, you know, from the students around the world. And I would really want that to be coming from you also. That is only possible if you're really following a process that is being discussed and that is being tested. Is that clear, guys? All right. So in a while, I'll just uh, pick up and show you my screen. You can tell me if you are able to see that. Can you see my screen? You guys, yes, can sir. you see that? All right. Yes, okay. So, you know, what I've done is, um, you know, the latest examiner report that is that is available on the ACC website is for the September and December 2022 exam. I've just picked up and I just wanted to discuss that with you in terms of, you know, what has been observed in the examiner report from the SBL exam standpoint as to what has not working for the students. So I just wanted to tell you that so that at least you are aware of it. And if there is anything that you really need to work on, you really need to, you know, of course, target on, you can really, you know, just go ahead and, and crack that. The first thing first, you know, I have is the background of the question that was there. So it was a, you know, it, the, the, it is like last to last quarter question that, that was there in the in the SBL exam, which was of Qualita Home PLC. It is a house building company. The candidate role that was being given to you was of a finance manager who was reporting to a CFO and he was supposed to write various answers as a senior finance manager of an organization. Now, this is what I was mentioning, Asma, that you have to take the role of a senior finance manager over here. So if you are a senior finance manager and you're writing a briefing note, the briefing note would have a different tone. But if you are a director of an organization and writing a briefing note, then the tone would be different. So you have to assume a role and then you have to start answering. And that's what I was mentioning that, you know, one of the important aspects of this is that you have to understand the role that is being given to you, understand who your audience is in terms of, you know, who you're really sending the document. And then, of course, you know, trying to ensure that you're not missing on to it. All right. Moving on, guys, we have what was given to you in the question. I think there is too much of an information over here. I don't want to get into it, you know, but I just wanted to give you a brief that, you know, what was given. An overview of the organization was given an extract from the website of an organization that had like mission statement, governance structure, the board structure, and so on and so forth. Then you had annual report that really highlighted the strategic objective. Got it. Then you have the economic outlook report that really high, you know, highlighted what was happening in the housing industry. Then you had cost management and control activities internal checklist that was again given to you in terms of citing out the issues that they're really, that they're really observing on the cost management side or on the control side. Then they had a meeting extract or the minutes of the meeting that held to, of course, discuss the problem that they had on one of the development site. 
They also had a risk management proposal. They were facing some risks. The proposal was given. And of course, it was there with the CFO. And you have to really understand the principal risks from it. And last but not the least is there was a report that was there on the poor customer service. And you really have to understand as to what is really happening and why it is happening the way it is happening. Important piece to learn from this website or this, this slide is that examiner in the SBL exam can give you anything. Now, see in this question, he has given you the overview. He has given you the extract from the website. He has given you an annual report, an economic outlook report, you know, an internal checklist on the control and the cost management. He has given you minutes of the meetings. He has given you a proposal on the risk. And he has given you a newspaper report highlighting the poor service and so on and so forth. So see kind of data that he gives you in a question. Ask my, you really, really with me on this? The kind of content that he really throws at you. You really have to consume that and then start answering your question that, you know, okay, I understand this. I understand this. Don't worry, Asma. There are many questions that are there in the revision bootcamp that are already with you in terms of dealing with these kind of scenarios. I just wanted to highlight, and of course, to the folks who are seeing, seeing this for the first time, you know, they should know that this is really important for them, that they should not forget this. Is that clear? All righty. Moving on. The overall analysis of the exam, if I really know, you know, cite out in terms of, you know, what really went bad in the exam, the examiner didn't feel that there was, you know, depth available in the answer. You know, as per him, the depth was missing. You know, it was not that great. Explanation was not up to the mark. To put it differently, people did not answer what was being asked for. There was gap in there. And last but not the least is CB understanding and functionality. People did not practice question on the CB environment. Big problem. If you are not practicing question on the, on the CB platform, and then you're answering that, you may struggle, man. You would struggle. So you're very important and imperative that you have practiced that. You have a CB training available with you guys. You know, that is being already being provided to you. You have to look onto it. You have to work through the practice platforms on the ECCA and ensure that you're not missing onto it. Candidates who failed, you know, what was the issue with them, you know, in terms of, you know, what failed. And of course, you know, these guys, just to you know, reiterate, guys, these all are the pointers coming from the ACCA website. So I'm not making anything on my own. You know, it is an ACCA website examiner report that really tells you what is not working well for the students. So you should not be worried about that, you know, what is the source of the information. Lack of understanding in terms of, you know, what is relevant for the company. Okay. Not fully explaining the point. And of course, why that point is relevant. Of course, I would say not really targeting the exact requirement of the question. Lack of analysis skill, and we'll come on to that in a while, because analysis skill is a professional skill that is to be demonstrated in the exam. So we'll come on to that in a while. Failure to provide what the requirement really specified. Lack of commercial acumen. Again, and you know, a professional skill. We'll talk on that. Poor technical knowledge, and of course, last but not the least, was making irrelevant points. Again, if you really circle it down, you know, uh, Asma, the way I started off with that, you in this exam, you really have to point down what examiner exactly needs. If he's asking X, give him X. Do not give him X plus two. He's not interested in it. He'll tell you that, you know, X plus two is not needed. Nandita, if he's asking Y, give him Y. Aditya, this is very different from a CA exam. CA exam never gives you this. Never. I am a qualified chartered accountant. I can tell you, I've seen the difference. CA exam never tells you that, you know, do not make irrelevant points. And we all, are, we all are used to making it. You know, we have what we, the way we used to uh, understand answer was that I have written this much. Good, they are. Four marks, I've written this much. It is good. Over here for four marks, you may write this much. It is absolutely fine. But write what is relevant. If you'll give him this and only out of this, this is relevant. Trust me, he's not, he'll not give you four marks. He'll give you two and a half. Because he'll tell you that you have wasted his time padding out irrelevant information. Do not do that. Specifically for the chartered accountancy students, we are used to that. And I'm not differentiating you versus me, my friend. I am of your caliber. I am I'm of your category. I have gone through that. I have seen that. Please do not do that mistake. He needs this. Give him this. You know, it... I have seen students really saying that it is four marks, sir. We're only writing this, sir. 
will that help sir will we get marks sir yes sir you would get it sir if that is relevant if that is relevant afia you will get it irrespective of the fact that you're switching off your camera you would still get it if you'll write this much afia are you with me yes sir all right good thank you moving on professional skill issues you know there are professional skills to be demonstrated in the exam and we'll come on to that when we'll start off the sessions when we'll go through the sessions there are various professional skills that are to be cited out when you're writing the answer the examiner really have seen issues with you demonstrating the professional skills in the exam so like you know you are using over long paragraphs nops that is not needed you are not considering who was receiving the document and nandita please note this very important if a document is to be sent to a board of director you cannot make loose comments on it i have seen in this exam also cites out let's say you have a situation wherein uh, a director of an organization is not behaving the way he should be behaving he is not that professional he is doing something that are that are that is not acceptable integrity is an issue and this and that now you being a senior finance manager of an organization you know what the director is doing is not right okay and then you are being asked let's say to prepare a presentation that would go to board citing out the issues that you are really, really observing on hand now when you are writing that you have to ensure that the tone and the language that you are using is professional despite the fact that director is not doing what is what he is supposed to do but you just cannot say that director is useless you would still say that you know what the expectation from a leadership role is this and we see a gap in x y z area you know it's like you have to be politically correct my friend in anything and everything that you would write you cannot cannot be derogatory in any way possible this is just an example my friend there are various examples that we have discussed in the sessions and of course in the revision boot camp you have to look on to it do not miss on that important piece is that we are understanding the content that come what may general professionalism is nandita something that i would never never compromise on you have to demonstrate aditya in anything and everything that you do afia do not forget that asma do not forget that and chahad and ishika you just have to have to ensure that you're not missing on to it you know taking names is a way of ensuring that you're not um uh, sleeping uh and of course you know uh, switching on cameras is also one of the reason i don't want you guys to sleep so that i can have a check on that aditya you were saying something yes sir now uh, i have great hold on c writing answers of ca exams so how can bring hold on such type of language that you told now i think aditya language is not different nowhere ca exam says that you can be derogatory to anyone Okay. no one no way ca exam says that the only thing is that we are used to writing more okay over here we have to balance that as a content we are used to um, so you know i and you know let me let me tell you uh, you know uh, it, you know again a real life case when i gave my ca final exam you know i uh, in my audit exam i finished my audit exam in one sheet as in the one sheet that i got i finished my audit exam and a, and a girl who used to who was like sitting you know on the right hand side you know uh, to me and she was very intelligent i know because you know we were in one session and one class she took at least three sheets that point in time and i took one it i don't know i i didn't had a content to write i what i don't know what she was writing she and me got almost the same marks of course she got like 62 i got like 60 but both of us got the same same marks we both of us cleared and of course are now chartered accountant and now friends and this and that but what is imperative is writing more is not important writing relevant is relevance that's what we all need to understand i'm sure you know we all we all understand that but then you know 
many of the discussions that i do with the chartered accountancy student is that uh, sir only this sir only this and i can i can tell you, you know a classical example i was i was taking an sbr session in the morning today and uh, one of the chartered accountancy students said that sir only this these many questions we have to do sir in ca we have done rtps we have done uh past papers scanners you know then mr xyz some he in some him name he took you know he gave us these many questions he has a book this much we have done this sir in sbr we are only going to do this i said yes sir you only have to do this but because this is what it is yeah yes you only have to do this because examiner only ex- expects you to do this you should be happy about it you should not be sad about it and that's what is going to be a change for you also aditya because you're coming from a different side of the table you have to learn that art you know i have seen both the sides of the table and so that i can you know and i can very well guide you that you know this is how you should be thinking about it and we'll talk more on that because there are various things that we that i you that i'll i'll highlight you that you have, the way you have to walk this path and then and rest is history the only thing is the expectation of examiner should be matched absolutely the only thing is you should become an acca <laughs> that is it yes everything become else become secondary no afia am i right afia yeah see so, yeah, afia i experienced that one i actually wrote a uh, diploma in ifrs exam paper of only 83 marks and i wrote only irrelevant nothing extra so i got 71 so i experienced that ki we should not write irrelevant points not needed just not need thank you all right okay you know coming on to uh, you know uh, the third point which is like not paying attention to the format so if a memo is needed you have to follow a format of memo if a briefing note is needed you have to follow a format and so on so forth do not do not forget on that and we have practiced a lot on this nandita asma you would you can just go back and see the revision boot camp all of the formats that are relevant are well covered on that so you don't have to run from pole to pillar all of that that is relevant from your examination standpoint is very well covered over there again you know last point is you know failing to demonstrate commercial acumen commercial acumen is again a professional skill and we'll talk on you know professional skill when we'll really go in there and for start discussing that but important piece is that you we should not be forgetting on that some suggestions my friend that i have you know for for all of you uh you know in terms of you know what you should be really thinking about you know when you're really thinking the next attempt that you're making out from the sbl exam standpoint one you must be spending good amount of time in planning and considering carefully what you would write and of course ensure that your answer are number one covering all the task requirement many of the time examiner gives you in the question that you have to answer this and this we only answer this and forget about another this nope will answer both will not miss on to that structure logically and work on your professional skills we have done a lot on that in terms of practice balance in terms of depth of the discussion you know number of points we made and there is a uh, philosophy that fintram follows in terms of how many points you should give for each marks we will we'll come on to that you know when we'll discuss sessions you have to have you know ensure that you're covering the most important points you're not missing on to that you're not giving irrelevant information not padding out your answer for 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 unnecessary information you're not making same points two or more times important and imperative one point only one time nandita we are not going to be repeating it come what may is that clear guys yes sir practice the past examination question cbs must and appear for the mock exam asma see i told you i told you the same appear for it follow the format and professional skill there is a raft p formula that that fintram really follows in the revision boot camp i'm sure you will go and check it out raft p is your raft to clear the spl exam do not really miss on to that and it is important to reiterate you know for the candidates that they should read the technical and the professional requirements together this would help them in uh, you know having the i would say correct style in the tone and the professionalism is to be ensured in all the answers that are, that has to be given all of this my friend is practiced a lot on 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 the questions of the past exams when i've sorted out and of course solved questions in the revision boot camp for yourself ensure that you're watching that at least two times and then practice your questions by your own hand and then only sit for exam is that clear guys yes sir 
Now that's actually brings me to an end in terms of, you know, what I really wanted to cover. Examiner report runs into various pages. I've really taken the crux out of it in terms of what I felt is relevant for you and, you know, would be making sense for you in terms of, you know, you really knowing that you're not missing on to it. Okay, coming on to this slide, you know, of course, we'll come on to questions in a while. Coming on to this slide, you know, this is about the FinTram offering for the, for the Strategic Business Leader exam. I'm sure many of you would have seen, we have a full course that is available that covers entire content of the Strategic Business Leader. And that is coming free, you know, um, that is, so with that, we have SBL Revision Bootcamp coming free. The Revision Bootcamp is a place where when you practice questions, including concept, comprehensive, you know, exam standard and past exam questions, giving you all the tips and tricks that is needed for, you know, from the professional skill standpoint, from the format standpoint and so on and so forth. So that is coming free with the, you know, with the, with the full course. The students who have, you know, studied, or let's, let's say anywhere, and they only want to practice questions, they can also take the revision bootcamp that is also available. We also have an SBL memory chart ebook available, which really helps you grasp. So it's a pictorial, you know, depiction of various uh, SBL concepts, uh, specifically crafted by FinTram team. That will help you in terms of memorizing the the information in the areas. There are various models that are there in the SBL exam that would really help you in terms of memorizing that. And last but not the least is the fast track course. Uh, that comes, you know, with the revision bootcamp and mock exam. This fast track course is specifically for the students who have not been able to clear SPL and they needed some extra, um, I would say, support. So fast track course is being crafted in a way that you are able to revise the entire content and then practice the questions and then hit the exam in the best possible way. So these are the four offerings that are available. Uh, you know, for the from the SPL standpoint, you can certainly check out with fintram.com on this and uh, they'll be happy to help you in what, whatever way possible. Coming on to questions, guys, anyone, you know, if you have any questions, anything that you may have in your mind, I'm happy to answer, happy to help. And of course, uh, you know, support you in, in, in whatever way possible. I just wanted to bring this to your notice because this, uh, I would say, examiner report really helps you understand what other students are doing wrong so that you know you're not repeating that mistake when you would really come and 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 have have exam for yourself so you were saying something asma i think uh, you raise your hand yes sir you wanted to ask, you wanted us to ask questions about the course or uh, about how to attempt the exam so my intention over here was that you know i can tell you what is not working well for the students Okay. That at least you are aware of it and you're not making the same mistake again. Mm, got it. All right, Nandita, you raise your hand. Anything I can help you out with? Uh, yeah, so a couple of questions. Um, so um, when you spoke about, uh, you know, the format, like, you know, the length of the answer, uh, like ever since I've joined ACCA, the professional level, all, uh, you know, all our, uh, tutors have been uh, telling is that uh, quality over quantity, right? So then, uh, and it has helped uh, me in a lot of way also. Now, when it comes to SBL, how how would you say about the marking scheme? Like there are certain topics that you know, uh, so, uh, like say for example, uh, like strategic capabilities. When they ask about that, or Porter's value chain model, they when the question uh, demands Porter's value chain. Uh, you know, each valid point will have two markers or each uh, when you demonstrate a professional skill, it will have one mark. So uh, how do we tackle the marking scheme when it comes to this particular paper? So uh, we have, uh, you know, given a methodology in our sessions in terms of, you know, what you should be doing with each and every mark. So there is a marking methodology, what we follow that, you know, if quotient is of this mark, then these many pointers are to be given. And of course, we also highlight which, you know, uh, pointers to be really, you know, coming up first, you know, for example, you know, you said Porter's value chain or Porter's diamond for that matter, or let's say uh, um, pistol for that matter, just taking an example, you know, we we have crafted a methodology in terms of, you know, which model is, is relevant where. So if a question would be asking this, then this is the model to be used. If a question is asking this, then this is the model to be used. There is a lot of confusion over there in the student fraternity in terms of, you know, what and how one should be using the models. So we have really mastered there in terms of, you know, what one should be doing there. 
and ensure you know that you're not making that mistake and then comes you know in terms of how one should be writing it how much you should be writing onto that all of that is very well covered in the sessions on this um so what uh, now the date is what april 23rd now we have like maybe one week more so what do you suggest uh, according to you what do you suggest an ideal plan for us to do since we have done with the course and what do you suggest the next action plan to be so you have done with all the syllabus areas yeah so i am uh, you know still uh, reading through the revision text and then i have slowly started uh, attending the past papers so, so i would say the best strategy would be to to go through the past papers if that is uh, uh, so um, like in i believe in this particular paper past papers are the one that actually helps because when you have formed a base for all the knowledge that you get from your study text past papers is what that actually helps isn't it see my you know i and i keep saying this i'm sure you know asma would have heard this in a number of times in the uh, sbl exam i never recommend anybody doing an exam kit i never re recommend that for me exam kit is is not relevant for the sbl exam anything and everything that you really need to do is the past exam papers if you are only thinking of uh, doing the questions you can of course you know opt out for a revision boot camp also that covers various questions and of course the tactics and the tricks and the you know tips that are needed to address and of course answer the exam you can look on to that there are various past exam questions also that are being solved into it so that will give you you know an idea and of course you can you can target various other questions of the past exams on your own way but at least that will give you an idea in terms of you know how one should be targeting that okay so last question now uh, say for example like we are planning on attending the june session isn't it and uh, we we know for a fact that there are a lot of changes that are coming up for the september 23 uh, syllabus or the exam structure so what would you suggest we get this paper out of the way by june or uh, would it be more uh, you know advantages for us to sit uh, during the september 23 because we have a pre seen material isn't it so what so do you suggest do you have a choice for it as in do you have a choice that can you skip the, your june exam no right no not really i mean you uh, yeah. exam with 100% fuel no forget about what is happening in september you don't have yeah. a choice no, you know and don't even think about it what okay. will happen in september nandita we'll see what happens over there you know your many of the folks are saying that pre seen material will be an advantage i tell you it will be a disadvantage it will be a disadvantage what do you think examiner you know do you think examiner is that uh, he doesn't understand that you know what you would do with the pre pre reading yeah. he very well understands that right so he would have his own ways of testing you on the on to that so please do not undermine the importance of the exam and and the uh, capability of examiner to really test you there so yeah. please don't do that you are giving exam in june just go and crack it in june and move it on you know do not really think about september come what may easy difficult forget it kill it right now thank you so much yeah asma you were saying something yeah sorry i just wanted to ask you like i don't know if that's relevant here in the session i'm not i'm really sorry about that but i was always confused about what is the difference between objectivity and integrity uh like when it comes to uh, fundamental principles objective is uh, is telling you uh uh you know my exact view on it and being very straight forward on that which is like asma june attempt is something that i want you to target september the content and the way the examiner would be testing the sbl exam is changing we only have to crack this in june come what may Okay. subjective is what you know uh, nandita was saying that you know this is coming in june what should i be thinking you know how should i be thinking about it That's, i'm saying uh, objectivity versus integrity i'm i'm coming on to that uh, let me explain you first the objectivity okay. terms, you know, so objectivity is more having a i would say straight forward view or a or a uh, one way uh, answer to a thing that you know this is how it should be there is no subjectivity involved in it there is no two way uh, discussion okay. involved in it it is what it is now when it comes to integrity integrity is more to do with your own ethics 
integrity is to more you know is more to do with you being ethical in whatsoever you do whatsoever you display in whatsoever action you have integrity and objectivity are two different things objectivity is more being straightforward to one thing integrity is being ethical in whatsoever you may do could you say that both of these things have one common ground that you are not supposed to be biased mm. see <laughs> biased is a wrong word you should be thinking in the interest of an organization would be the right word yeah so no personal bias like you're thinking no, more yes no personal um bias you can say or no personal interest should be self interest should, should should have a conflict with the organizational goals and objectives so this applies to both objectivity and integrity right yes integrity it you know it applies to objectivity integrity one um, uh, you know oneness you know many of the companies have a principle that says uh, let's say one wipro one black rock one bcg it's like you know one organization one principle one way of doing things and so on and so forth so all of those things revolves around the same that you know uh, come what may we'll be following one stance mm. so for one scenario see when it comes to example i can never differentiate between these that's a problem like you when don't you have to but you don't have to for all practical purpose you know they will not be asking you to differentiate between objectivity and integrity in any which ways important is that you understand objectivity is more to do with having a um, a one view or a one way of action uh, without having any bias towards anything okay integrity is more to do with the you being ethical and you being principally oriented in terms of whatever you're delivering got it okay all right all right anybody has anything before we really wrap up i just want to make sure that we're not uh, missing on anyone anybody aditya anything that i can help you out with or ishika or afia or anyone can you share your whatsapp number so i can discuss my personal case with you yes yes <laughs> my whatsapp number is is given over here you can reach out to me and you know happy to pick it up see my my whole idea is that if you're really thinking about this exam in june do not do not miss on the things that we've discussed do not miss on the practice of the question or the revision boot camp i think revision boot camp is must for everyone and do not miss on the mock exam so i have seen students uh, and this is not to take as an offense but i have seen students uh, spending good amount of money in paying exam fees again and again and not uh, not really uh, you know finding the right way of killing the exam so if there is any buddy who can help you in terms of killing the exam do take the right help at right point in time and and address it and kill it in the best possible way uh, so when will be when will the revision board can start it so it's it's already available you can of course have a look on that it's already there okay thank you Uh, sir, sorry to bother you again. Uh, where is the CV exactly? Like I was looking through the content, I couldn't find. In the find revision it. boot camp. In the revision boot camp. Oh, okay. All right. Anybody, guys, anything that you have before we really wrap up? So can you share that slide so I can note number? Slide. Last slide. We have WhatsApp number. Yes. Just one minute. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. I think that's pretty much what I really intended to cover. Uh, I'm. I hope this was of some value at to you. If there is anything that I can really help you to support you in a bit, you know, best possible way, do reach out to me, and we'll be definitely be able to support you in the in whatever way possible. All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward, uh, you know, to my cup of coffee when we'll see, uh, you know, you after the result day. So look forward, and all the best. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you sir.